So today is Ash Wednesday, according to the calendar as I'm recording this. What is Ash Wednesday? Does that mean anything to us in the Christian church, Churches of Christ? Or does it mean just another day? Well, I want to look at the Bible and I want to see exactly what Scripture says we need to do when we fast. Ash Wednesday is a very special day on the Catholic calendar and some of the higher churches calendars such as Presbyterian, Methodist, different churches like that because it marks the beginning of Lent. So what does the Christian Church, Churches of Christ, think about Lent and Ash Wednesday? Well, one of the big things that we try to do is be able to encourage anybody in their prayer life to be able to spend time with God in prayer and with fasting. We don't want to limit anybody. We don't want to force them to do something during a set schedule and have it done that way. We are told in Scripture, in fact, Jesus in Matthew chapter 6 is very plain about it. He says, when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, uh, for they love and stand and pray in the synagogues and, and the street corners that they might be seen by others. I say this to you, they've received a reward, but when you pray, Go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. So does that mean we don't pray in public? Absolutely not. We should pray in public. We should come together and pray together whenever we assemble in like precious faith, whether it's on a Sunday or Sunday night or Wednesday night or whenever we come together as Christians. We should actively pray. But our relationship with God shouldn't just be a collective prayer. It should be time out with God. God one-on-one. -on -one. And so when we pray to God, we spend time with God, we're talking with Him, we're living with Him, we're, we're having an intimate conversation and relationship with Him. What's He say? Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, a lot of people say, well, you pray that prayer, right? You're supposed to pray that prayer. That is a model prayer. That is not a structured prayer that says, okay, this is how you have to say this. It's modeled on what we should be doing. We should be praising God. We should be giving thanks to God. We should be offering ourselves to God openly and, and, and giving our hearts to Him in every possible way we can. We need to be able to speak with our heart to talk to God one-on-one -on -one directly and not be concerned about a structure or how it sounds or how pretty the words are. When we're talking with God, we need to be direct. We, If we're angry, we need to be asking God, help me with this anger. Let your heart go to Him. Let Him be able to guide you and direct you. If you're happy, you're enthused, you're excited, allow that to bleed through in your prayer life. Be able to enjoy your time with God, whether that's one-on-one -on -one or as a collective. So what about the fasting part? Obviously, Lent means 40 days of fasting, okay? That's what a lot of people take out of it, and they take one thing out of their life that's causing them problems, whether it's eating too much or whether it's watching too much TV or being online too much, whatever the case is. A lot of people do those things. Well, Jesus kind of gives us an idea of what to do when fasting as well in Matthew 6. He says, when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. For they disfigure their faces that they that the fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they've received the reward. But when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who's in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. So what does that mean to us as Christians today? Well, if it is Lent and you want to practice that, by all means, take that 40 days to spend in prayer. Take that time to go and sacrifice whatever it is that you want to sacrifice. Take that moment, but don't make a public spectacle of it. Don't make an announcement. Oh, hey, guess what I gave up for this? No, don't worry about that. Give it to God. Come in there, wash your face, be willing to be new and happy and showing yourself as the Christian you are. Be willing to be content and be living for Jesus. Take that time to go and be built up in Jesus and allow the Lord to be working in you as you sacrifice those things. Whether it is taking less time on social media, boy, there's something everybody needs. Or how about just taking time out for you and spending more time in prayer? One of the things I would encourage people to do for the next 40 days, 
pray for a revival within you. Pray for that opportunity for God to work in you, to help you, to encourage you, to strengthen you, to build you up, to make you new and improved and living for Him. Let Him be seen in you. Whatever way is possible, take time out to spend more time in Scripture, reading the Word. Do what you need to do in order to improve your relationship with the Lord. Don't think of it as a work that has to be done. Think of it as growing closer to Christ. What does Jesus say? He doesn't say if you fast. He says when you fast. When we fast, we are to give our best to Him, and that doesn't mean it's an option. Sometimes we do need to fast. There are times when we need to take time out and acknowledge that we need to improve our relationship with Him, and we need to let go of a few things. That's part of our relationship with God. And I hope that that will help encourage you this holiday season, during this time, before the Resurrection Sunday services that come up and we start talking about Easter and all the other good things that come along with the resurrection, the death, the burial, and resurrection, the passion of Christ. When we get into those things, this is so important. Take time out and improve your walk with Jesus. Don't look glum about it. Don't be upset about it. Live a life for Jesus and love Jesus. Take time out to pray with Jesus. Take time out to fast with Jesus. Do what you need to do in order to improve your walk with Him. And don't do it because someone tells you you have to do it. Do it because you want to do it. Give it to God this season. And there you have it, friends. If you have any questions, feel free to write me anytime. You can visit me on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash brother Robbie, all together one word. And you can come here and message me on here and leave a comment down below. Like, share, and subscribe. Tell your neighbors and your friends because we want to be able to encourage each other with the word of Jesus Christ and continue to love and grow in him. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Take care. And we'll see you the next time.